The Model Y is already getting a shakeup. Model S and X get a bump in charging capability. We see a new and welcome incoming feature for AP2 owners and more. This is Tesla Tidbits episode number 609 for July 13th, 2020. This show is sponsored by my supporter, Richard. If you're in the market for a new Tesla, please consider using his referral code. Ask your salesperson to use code Richard174 or go direct to the web link ts.la slash Richard174 and pick up a 1,000 mile supercharging credit for your new vehicle. We start the week with an interesting development on the Model Y front. In the tweet stream of another story that we'll get to in a moment, Twitter user at jgrano305 mentioned to Elon, quote, Info on the standard range Model Y was just taken down from the configuration page. Is it still going to be made? End quote. Elon responded, saying, quote, No, as range would be unacceptably low, less than 250 miles EPA. End quote. However, Elon, not one to leave well enough alone, added a bit of extra juicy info following this in his next tweet, saying, quote, We have reduced pricing on Model Y long-range dual-motor and will offer a long-range single-motor Y in a few months, which improves affordability while still keeping the product excellent, end quote. So, wow, let's unpack here. If you were hoping to get a standard-range Model Y, your hopes are over as the product will never exist. If you're in that boat, my condolences as you're now looking at a significantly pricier car as a result. If you were already looking at a dual motor, your car just got that much cheaper as they've effectively slashed $3,000 off the vehicle, made an already great deal even better there. If you were one of those looking for that standard range vehicle, not all is lost as the addition of the single motor long range variant will take a bit of the hit out of that price bump. If I had to take a stab at it, look for it to start at about $45,000, roughly you know half of what the difference would have been for just this straight Uh, dual motor car. While not the 40k that you may have been expecting, you're getting a significantly better range for the $5,000 increase that I'm assuming. According to a later tweet from Elon, the range will be, quote, significantly higher than 300, end quote. We'll see how quickly the few months takes before it's visible in the design studio. Now this also begs the question, and something that I've long said is coming, is this the end of any non-long-range Model 3 as well, much like the approach Tesla took with Model S and Model X? I believe this answer is yes, in an effort to both reduce manufacturing complexity and improve bottom-line profits on the vehicles. The two versions of Model S and X were necessary at one point to provide entry-level price points on vehicles that started in the $70,000 range. Now that you have a much less expensive model of vehicle in both vehicle categories, the same approach can be taken without excluding too many folks. I look for this discontinuation before the year ends personally, so if you're looking for a standard range plus Model 3, I'd get on it if I were you. If you're in the market for a Model 3 and are looking for a cheaper vehicle, might be worth waiting if you're able, as there's no reason Tesla couldn't also bump the price down for Model 3 for the same reasons that Model Y got a reduction across the board. It's entirely possible we could see a single-motor long-range Model 3 at $39,990 and a $43,990 dual-motor long-range before the year is out. Obviously, this is pure conjecture on my part, but certainly plausible. On a personal note, it would certainly make an upgrade to EV far more tempting. As always, I will be on the lookout for you all if anything happens. So sticking with that previous Twitter thread for item number two for the show, Teslarati had tweeted their story about Model S and Model X suddenly seeing a spec increase on the vehicle pages at Tesla's website. From their article, though Tesla had just recently bumped up charge speeds from 200 kilowatts to 225 kilowatts for the big cars, their webpage cites a 250 kilowatt maximum, finally bringing the flagship vehicles on par with their smaller, cheaper counterparts. Elon chimed in on the thread saying, quote, We had to increase some wire thicknesses in S-X to reduce resistive heating. Technically, won't quite be 1,000 miles per hour charging, as X especially is much bigger than 3, end quote. So now if you're paying the bigger bucks for the bigger vehicles, not only do you get a 400 mile range vehicle, but now you also get to charge that thing at the highest available Tesla rates. A great improvement for the veteran vehicles. Still hanging out on Twitter for item number three, where the Australian Tesla owner's account asks Elon, quote, Elon, can we get the side repeater cameras to show full screen when indicating, please? End quote. This is a great feature request for those with AP2 vehicles, as it would effectively negate any issues regarding complaints about blind spot monitoring. 
Elon confirmed this could be done, but like with many of these feature requests, it was a one-word affirmation with no time frame. We'll keep a lookout for the latest on this one, as it is a welcome safety feature. Item 4 today comes as a result of my continuing monitoring of the COVID situation in Alameda County, which is home to Tesla's Fremont factory. As I previously shared, rising statistics were becoming a concern in the area, and Alameda County's Public Health Department unfortunately confirms this in a press release on Sunday. In the release, they say, quote, Alameda County is experiencing a continued increase in reported COVID-19 cases in the recent weeks, including elevated disease transmission. The magnitude of the change is above what would be expected as a result of the county's substantial expansion of testing, and we have been placed on the state's county monitoring list. Counties placed on the monitoring list receive targeted support from the state, and after three consecutive days on the monitoring list, are subject to state-imposed restrictions and enforcement, end quote. At this time, this actually wouldn't change anything in the county, as the state actions would restrict things that Alameda County already does not currently permit, since it proactively closed these activities after seeing the worsening trend. The release goes on to detail further information about the county's efforts and does not mention the closing of any other permitted businesses at this time. I'll continue to keep watch on any possibility to affect production at the factory. Lastly for this show, Clean Technica is reporting a small slip in the schedule for Battery Day and the annual shareholders meeting. While Elon previously tweeted September 15th as the likely date, Tesla made an official company statement that the event will be held September 22nd a week later than previously announced. Although this is hugely dependent on the previous story, in that a large gathering will hopefully be a thing that could happen in just two months, despite all the trends going in the wrong direction currently. Here's hoping for everyone's sake that this can indeed happen safely as planned. That will do it for today's show. Thanks to all my patrons supporting the show at patreon.com slash Tidbits. And as always, a special shout out to all the super patrons supporting the show at the $10 plus level. They are Ryan Scarborough, Lee Sweet, William Henry Crew III, Dory and Steve Guberman, Ralph and Cheryl Waterhouse, Todd Sullivan, Mitch Long, Zortec LED Canada, Morvin Og, Raymond and Deborah Malkowitz, T Sportline, Vicky Kirk, Ricky Johnston, Nathan Garza, Ed Patterman, Sunil Joseph, Joy Rodriguez, and Brad Lettner. If you have feedback for me, the best way to be heard is to tweet at Tesla Tidbits and use the hashtag AskTeslaTidbits if you'd like your question to be considered for the show. Until next time, keep it charged and hit the road.